Hello, Brenda, nice to see you again. Let me unmute you. Hi, nice to see you again. And Dr. Clapper, nice to see you. Hey there, Steve, good to see you. Thank you for, sorry for they're pronouncing your name wrong, but thank you again for joining us. <laughs> Dr. Goldhammer, thank you All again right. for coming and joining us. My pleasure. Course, Dr. Campbell, thank you so much. Uh, a lot of us are very excited for the opportunity to hear what you all have to say and having a chance to see you. We're all so grateful to you and you've influenced so many of us with your books and your lectures. Um, <clears throat> we really do appreciate it. And if we appreciated you 15 years ago, we appreciate you even more now because information seems even more challenging to get honest information. So maybe at the beginning, you were one of many who told the truth. And now um, I really, really appreciate it because getting honest, accurate information from people who do the research um, and see people is really, really valuable. So thank you all very much. And I speak for um, millions of people who feel the same way. Um, so if each of you could just give a 30 second rundown um, of just what you've been doing the last few years, um, just to get everyone up to speed in case there are people that are not aware of you, Maybe we could go Dr. Goldhammer, Dr. Clapper, Dr. Campbell, and Brenda in that order. Just give us a quick update on what you do, what you've been doing, and then I'll go to, go to questions. So I operate the uh, True North Health Center, which is currently a 79-bed facility that specializes in water-only fasting. And we've been publishing some papers about the results that we've been seeing using a whole plant food diet in conjunction with fasting and dealing with a variety of common chronic degenerative conditions. Thank you. I've been a primary care physician for 50 years, and uh, towards uh, the latter half of my career, I spent eight years on the staff at True North Health Center of Dr. Goldhammer's Noble Institution, where I learned how to do nutritional medicine right and learned about the powers of fasting. Uh, but after eight years there, I was so appalled and embarrassed by the black hole of ignorance surrounding among my medical colleagues about their the effect of their patients daily diet and the diseases they're spending their careers treating uh, i felt the the higher calling for me was to uh, start going to the medical schools and talking to the medical students uh, about the importance of their patients diet in reversing these diseases before pharmacosclerosis sets into their brains and we've been very successful. I've lectured over 40 medical schools uh, uh, in the last two years, and we've got another, we've got dozens more ahead of us. So uh, I'm trying to educate, wake up physicians about the importance of their patient's diet, that it really has something to do with all these diseases they're spending their careers treating. Thank you. Dr. Campbell? Yes, uh, thank you. I mean, it's a pleasure to meet all of you guys. I know you all well, quite frankly. Uh, yeah, I've been crazy enough, actually, during the last couple of years to try to write another book, <laughs> 86 percent done. Um, and uh, the, the purpose of the book is to try to answer the question, based on the experiences I've had in the nutrition community, but to answer the question, why has it been taking so long to understand this concept of nutrition? Uh, and as I say, based on my own experiences, particularly in policy and, and laboratory and elsewhere, uh, I'm actually kind of, I don't know, a little bit depressed, you know, over the years, and particularly more recently, particularly in the sciences. Uh, and, uh, you know, we don't have the same authority to speak, the freedom to speak that we once did. So trying to make a point, getting in trouble because of it, I guess. So that's about it. Thank you. And um, I've been spending my time writing books as usual. I had a book come out uh, called Nourish, I think it was 2020. And then the last one, Plant Powered Protein in 2023. And also I've been uh, working on developing continuing education courses with the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. And I just did one with the Food Revolution Network on diabetes. And of course, all of the other usual things, lecturing and uh, writing, I've been participating in writing several research articles, um, one of which I'm very excited about because it will be providing the results of our research in the Marshall Islands on diabetes. So yeah, that covers it. Okay, great. So 
um, assuming that all of you could time travel and you could go back to yourself when you were 10 years old, but you only had two minutes total to talk to them about health and nutrition. And they already know not to smoke cigarettes, they know not to take drugs, and they know not to drive drunk. But you now have two minutes to tell them what you know for sure. So you don't have to tell them the difference between spirulina and chlorella, but you wanna tell them in these two minutes, what are the most important conclusions after all these years that you have, so we will go into detail about a lot of things, but just right on the surface, if you're telling yourself when you're 10 years old, you have two minutes to tell them the most important things so they can prevent getting any major diseases. What are the basic core things that you wanna tell your 10 year old version of you so they know this right from the start and don't have to make terrible mistakes and get sick and have friends get sick. So just the, the basic core things, even if you think it's obvious and a repeat of things you've said in the past, just so we all hear the core philosophy that you would tell yourself. Um, you go in the same order of Dr. Goldhammer, then Dr. Clapper, then Dr. Campbell, then Brenda Davis. So health is the result of healthful living and healthful living involves diet, sleep, and exercise. A healthful diet's a whole plant food, SOS-free diet. Um, exercise and sleep are both critically important. And when dietary excess has been uh, demonstrating its consequences, fasting can be an effective way of reversing the consequences of dietary excess. Okay, great, thank you. Dr. Clapper? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I would uh, make it very clear to my 10-year-old self that uh, we, our body has basically the same digestive system that our gorilla and bonobo cousins have. They're up in the trees eating leaves and fruits and vegetation all their lives. They don't develop clogged arteries, diabetes, uh, any of these diseases of civilization. So uh, to uh, fully embrace the wide, delicious variety available in plant-based foods and stay within those boundaries. Do not get tempted by animal products. See dairy products as a theft <clears throat> from mother cows and a transgression against human nature. <clears throat> and... Uh, and don't get uh, seduced into uh, consuming dairy products. See, don't eat sugar as a food. It's a flavoring, but if you eat it as a food, it's going to age you and hurt you. Uh, drink enough water, get enough, uh, uh, get enough sleep. Uh, keep that spine limber. You learn yoga early and do it all your life there. And, uh, uh, and uh, laugh as much as you can and do as much good work for uh, people and animals around you. And, uh, You'll have a great life there, but we're plant eater. Stay true to your nature. Thank you. Dr. Campbell? Yeah, I think uh, if I were talking to myself, I just would say, what are you doing in the barn? We don't need all that milk. <laughs> and uh, and also, uh, now that I'm this age, uh, to the, the one thought that occurs to me, I think that's more significant than any, is in a sense trying to redefine nutrition. Nutrition is, as most all of you obviously know, we tend to talk about nutrition in the context of individual nutrients, each one having a specific effect, specific mechanism. We've forgotten the idea that nutrients are really in food. And it's the collective effect of all the nutrients working in really magnanimous ways that actually create, creates a quite an amazing response. I, I really think this is kind of a big idea because uh, regardless of whether we're in the sciences or in the practice, I suggest, with so much focus on detailed things uh, and trying to get things right. And we can kind of miss the mark when we just decide to eat the plants, a variety of them, without the added stuff and we don't need the salt, sugar, and, and, uh, and oil. We're home free, as good as I guess. Thank you. Brenda. Well, I, I think I would start by saying I am so glad that you love vegetables and fruits. <laughs> um, those are the foods that are really the most important for you. And I'm glad that you enjoy beans and whole grains and nuts and seeds. Eat, you know, all of those foods you want. But I have to tell you something that's going to really surprise you. 
If you stop drinking milk and eating cheese, your stomach ache will go away. The stomach ache you've had all your life will disappear. And, and I also want to tell you that you don't have to eat animals, that it's okay. It's even better than okay if you don't eat animals. I know that you don't want to eat animals, but it's okay. And it's great if you stop eating them, because if you stop eating them, your health will be better. You'll be contributing to less pain, suffering, and death in those animals. And you'll help to make the world a healthier and safer place for all of us. And so you've got most of it down, just a couple of little changes, and you'll be good for life. And I know you want to accomplish a lot. And making these changes will help you to do that. Okay, great. Thank you. So the real truth about health is a 17-day conference. We have 80 speakers. And my job is to get speakers to speak at the conference. <clears throat> so I send out emails and I call people. And it takes a lot of effort. And we get a lot of great people. But one concern I have is people don't want to come to a conference where they then get attacked and beat up. So I find that I want to be respectful to all speakers. And I think other conferences do the same. Um, but one problem with that is you don't harass speakers. You're actually nice to them. You give them a forum to say what they want. What I really would like to do is every single time a speaker speaks, I would like at the end of every single sentence to say, prove it, prove it, prove it. Not because I want to be a pain in the neck, but because I don't want to be charmed by charismatic, smart, people with great credentials. So I want to always say, what is that based on? What is that based on? So even though I like a lot of people, I want to get the facts straight. I don't want to at 90, I don't want to later in life realize that something goes wrong because I wasn't really listening. So anyway, having said that, um, there are some speakers who are saying different things. Um, specifically, um, we have Dale Bredesen last night who speaks on avoiding Alzheimer's and Gabriel Cousins who eats a raw food plant-based diet and they were having saying different things about fat and cholesterol. I want to show you Gabriel's video just to get your feedback and help me interpret or help 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 us all understand what you what he's saying, okay? So can we show the highlights from Gabriel's video? and then ask for the speaker's feedback. Um, and I know that Dale Bredesen mostly agreed with Dr. Cousin's point of view. So I'd like to hear what four of you have to say about what he's saying. And a high carbohydrate diet. So when Dale Furman talks about, well, he sees a lot of people with vegans with brain uh, you know, degeneration, um, I look at the high carbohydrate diet, which I don't support because it stimulates brain inflammatory pathways. Now, to me, this is a really important study, the Journal of Alzheimer's 12, 12, 2012. I'm just going to read it because it's so important. Older people, and I, we're talking people above 60, eating a high carbohydrate diet, get the word high carbohydrate because we're told a lot in the vegan world that you want a high, high complex carbohydrate diet. People are talking about 70% carbohydrate. Yeah, well, here's the result. Have nearly four times the risk of, of, of developing mild cognitive impairment. So this is what David Pulmoner in his book, Grain Brain, I thought you did really good work. A diet heavy in inflammatory carbohydrates, which mostly they are, low in healthy fats, messes with the mind in more ways than one. But let's say messes with the brain in more ways than one. So fat is the preferred fuel of human metabolism, and it's been that way through evolution until we started farming about 10,000 years ago. Next slide, please. Now. This is really important because along with this high complex carbohydrate diet, we just have this cholesterol fear. And this is one of the second reasons I, I think that vegans tend to get more Alzheimer's 
because people with the highest cholesterol scored higher on cognitive tests than those with lower cholesterol levels. So this is my, I'm really talking more about cholesterol here, but Netherlands, Alzheimer's have lower amounts of cholesterol, free fatty acids in their cerebral spinal fluid. That is really important. As 2007 study showed that people who are regularly consumed omega-3, this is one of the supplements I'm going to talk about, they were 60% less likely to develop dementia than those who didn't regularly consume such oils. That's DHA and EPA. <laughs>